Hi, I'm Carl, and in this video we're going to go through questions 54 to 56 of section 3 of the pink booklet. So this is a question about genetics, uh, and unsurprisingly it's about eye colour. So we're told that there's two genes, brown and red, and different combinations of those can end up with a phenotype of red eyes, brown eyes, a mix of the two being maroon and neither being white, where no pigment is produced. And I've copied that information out um, here. But then we're told about um, a trans dihybrid genotype, and I just want to go over quickly what that might be, because it's explained that the recessive allele of each gene is located on different homologues, and that might not be immediately obvious um, what that actually means. So we're given figure 1a, which I'll copy out here. We've got these two different loci, uh, one for red and one for brown, and we're given the alleles that are present on this trans example here. So essentially you've got um, this relationship here where you've got one recessive on each and one dominant on each. And this is going to be in the, sorry, trans dihybrid example. But what about cis? What would that mean? So if we're told that the trans dihybrid means that recessive allele of each gene is located on different homologues, then cis obviously means they're going to be uh, located on the same homologue. So again, we've got our two loci for our two different genes here on either chromosome. And it means we're going to have one chromosome that has the dominant and one that has the recessive. And we'll come back to why that's important in a minute. So question 54 says, dihomozygous red-eyed males are crossed with cis dihybrid females. In females, there is a 50% recombination between the brown and red loci. Okay, so that first sentence introduces the cis dihybrid um, idea. So let's go through and work out what the different genes that could be passed on then are. So you're either going to be recessive for both or dominant for both. So if you're dominant for both, it will look like this. And if you're recessive for both, it will look like this. So then when we go on to do our cross here, let's consider um, what the genotype of a red-eyed male would be. So if they're red-eyed, that means they're going to be recessive for brown. So we can write that in and they're going to be dominant for red. And if they're homozygous or dihomozygous, that means that essentially they're going to be uh, having this genotype. Sorry, that'll be lowercase. But we can just simplify that because these are the genes that could be passed on. And you can write it down twice, but because it's the same in both cases, um, it's easier just to do it the once. And then the two options for the females, of course, is going to be dominant for both or recessive for both. So then what options does that give us? Well, the first one is obviously going to be dominant for red or um, homozygous dominant for red and heterozygous. And then the other one is going to be heterozygous for red and then homozygous recessive for brown. So what does that mean for phenotype? So here we're going to have red and brown produced, so that'll make maroon. And then this is going to um, just be red. So we've got a 50-50 split between red and maroon being produced. And that's going to be answer D then in this case. So 54 is going to be D, maroon-eyed and red-eyed in equal proportions. So if we move on to 55, and I'll get some more space here. It says, if a trans dihybrid male is crossed with a white-eyed female, what eye colours can the progeny have? So, of course, the trans dihybrid, it means they're going to be recessive for one and dominant for the other. So the options then are going to be recessive for red, or sorry, um, dominant for red, or recessive for red. And a white-eyed female will have no um, pigment produced, so it's going to be recessive for both. So that's going to be this genotype here. And of course you can write it out twice, but again, if you're, if, there's no point. So what are the two options then? Once we do our cross, that's our first. And then the next is going to be homozygous recessive for red and then heterozygous for brown. So what does this mean for phenotype then? So we've got red produced here and we've got brown produced here in equal um, proportions. Um, so it's going to be red and brown only, so 55 is going to be C. 
And then finally, question 56 says, brown-eyed phenotypes must be what? Um, so let's go through the different answers. A says, must be homozygous for the recessive red allele. So if it was in any way dominant for the red allele, then you'd get maroon, not brown. So the answer for 56 is A. But for completeness, let's go through the other um, options. So B says, brown-eyed phenotypes must be homozygous for the recessive brown allele. But if it's um, homozygous for the recessive brown allele, you're not going to get any brown pigment produced. And so they wouldn't be brown-eyed, so that's not true. C says, can either be homozygous or heterozygous for brown. So I, I don't like the way they've just said homozygous here. They could be um, homozygous dominant, um, and that would lead to being brown-eyed. Um, but if they're homozygous recessive, then it wouldn't. So in this case, you couldn't. Um, C is obviously not going to be right. And it's true also for D, because if you're homozygous dominant for red, then you're not going to get brown eyes, you'll get maroon. And if you're heterozygous for red, you're going to get maroon eyes, not brown. Um, so the answer, therefore, has to be A. So that was questions 54 to 56. I hope that helped.